Podcasts are hot right now. How do I know? Well, you're listening to one right now, aren't you? But you might be wondering, how on earth do I get my voice out there and start my own podcast? It all seems so intimidating. Between hosting and platforms and monetization, it can get real complicated real quick. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We started this podcast over two years ago, not knowing clue one on how to do it. So how'd we do it? We did it with Anchor. Anchor is the free podcast app with creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on all the platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And everybody likes money, right? Well, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So go right now, download the free Anchor app, or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your host, John Suter, Bart Moraz, and Brittany Blackman. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm located in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. Hello, listeners. It's Brittany Blackman, Junior Marketing Coordinator at Sumo Heavy. A quick note, we're in an unprecedented time, but with this comes an unprecedented amount of unity. Everyone is coming together to help, no matter what industry they're in. And now we're doing our part. If you advertise on the e-commerce minute, we'll donate 100% of the proceeds to Slice Out Hunger. Slice Out Hunger sends pizza to healthcare workers on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic while simultaneously supporting small businesses. To get involved, drop us a note at hello at sumoheavy.com or reach out through our various social media accounts. Stay safe, stay inside, and wash your hands. We're all in this together. It's e-commerce minute episode 682. In today's episode, Instacart plans to hire 300,000 additional shoppers. As millions of people are urged to stay home to limit the spread of coronavirus, grocery delivery is busier than ever. In fact, Instacart founder CEO Apurva Mita said, The last few weeks have been the busiest in Instacart's history, and our teams are working around the clock to reliably and safely serve all members of our community. So what's a company that revolutionized the art of grocery delivery to do? At a time when millions of people are being laid off due to COVID-19 related budget cuts, Instacart is hiring. Instacart, which delivers groceries from 25,000 local grocery stores around America, like Aldi, Costco Wholesale, and CVS Pharmacy, announced plans to hire 300,000 new full-service independent contractor shoppers nationally in the next three months. Instacart, which operates in 5,500 cities in North America, said the need for more workers is where it is seeing the most customer demand, including California, New York, Texas, Florida, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Virginia, New Jersey, Georgia, and Ohio. To bring in new workers en masse, Instacart says it's opening the wait list for shoppers' positions around the country. It's also ramping up outreach efforts in high-demand markets and increasing referral bonuses for existing shoppers. The company will likely tap into the same pool of candidates as grocers. This includes workers laid off from restaurants, retail, customer service, and tourism sectors. Retailers are raising hourly pay and offering bonuses to show their appreciation. Although Instacart didn't say it's raising pay, it did note shopper tips are up 30% over the past month. While Instacart has touted its surge in customer orders in recent weeks and introduced an option for customers to have orders left at their doorsteps, workers have criticized the company for not doing enough for them. Like other gig economy companies, Instacart said it will provide paid sick leave to workers diagnosed with coronavirus or placed under quarantine by public health authorities. But coronavirus tests remain hard to come by in the United States, and many workers can't afford to stop working without paid time off. As with Amazon warehouse workers, some Instacart workers fear contracting the virus on the job. Additionally, CNN reports that some Instacart workers have said they received low ratings from customers for things outside their control, like being able to get items that were out of stock, which impacted the future orders they received. They've also lost tips as a result. CNN Business also points out that the coronavirus demand for Instacart services is a remarkable turnaround for a startup once thought to have an uncertain future after Amazon acquired Whole Foods, a grocery chain that Instacart partnered with. Instacart was valued at nearly $8 billion in 2018 after a round of financing. Well, you know, we're seeing a lot of turnarounds in businesses that we thought were on life support or not doing so great. It's amazing what a few weeks in a, in a crisis can, can do to to the business world. I don't know. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's like companies are coming out of the woodwork right now and you, you don't know which way they're going to swing. Are they going to do something really good? Are they going to be Yelp? You know, <laughs> you, do, you don't know. Also, you just saw the list of all the other companies that are hiring, right? CVS is doing Walmart, like all the retailers are, when it comes to goods, they're hiring. And not only that, let's focus on like the retailers right now, Walmart and Target, they're not only hiring a lot of people. I think Walmart was hiring 100,000 or something like that. And they're basically waiving the one week 
interview period. They're basically down to 24 hours. The workers are now getting pay bumps. And in one instance, I read there's a Walmart that was doing their gross receipts for each day was $550,000. I mean, that's completely insane numbers. And they were basically giving out bon- like big bonuses to the managers. But at the same time, you know, these people are out there risking their lives. And the thing that's very troublesome is that you're supposed to be staying home, but people are antsy. And what I've read from a lot of Walmart workers is they're very frustrated is that people are using this opportunity like, okay, they're not working. So they're just going to go stroll around Walmart. You're supposed to get in there, get what you need and get out. But people are just hanging yeah. out in Walmart and they're mm-hmm. putting these employees that are, they need a job and they're coming to work, but they're putting their lives in danger for irresponsible people. Yeah. I mean, we went to a store last night. It's a smaller store. There wasn't a lot of people there, which is great. And then actually the employees are really particular about it. And then like announce like announcements all the time about moving along and there's tape on the floor now too. So there's definitely, you can see a lot of that going on. I, I actually, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to avoid larger stores for that particular reason. We shop at Aldi, which is a small footprint and you can basically see what's going on in an Aldi. If it looks too crowded, you're not going in. The only place, and I, you know, I've used Target as an example. We use their online pickup. The only one I still walk in is uh, Home Depot and that's, those trips are a lot more rare now because I'm just, I just don't even want to go near people. <laughs> <laughs> But getting back to this, the Instacart, we're looking at how food delivery, grocery, and otherwise have really broken out and really, you know, companies, like we said, were on life support are now suddenly, you know, their stock has gone up. One great example is Blue Apron. We've done countless podcasts on meal, meal service companies, subscription boxes. They were literally within probably months of either being acquired or just kind of just saying, hey, we give up. And now all of a sudden their stock, you know, went up to like $28. Uh, I think it's back down. It's back down to something a lot lower than that. But I think right when everything started to hit, they were investors looked at it and said, where are the hidden gems? And meal prep was one of them. And now we're seeing even my girlfriend's son, they're big Hello Fresh people, as I've said many times in the podcast. That's- they, that stock went up like crazy. That stock went up and they're not accepting any new customers. Like you can't even get into HelloFresh. And HelloFresh was, you know, what was their marketing three months ago? Here's $80 worth of yeah. free meals. Here's literally a yeah. hundred bucks. Use this for a month. Please. Quit. We don't care. We just need customers. I wish yeah. that we could insert somehow a gif of The Undertaker like rising up like he does <laughs> into like this... A, like a phoenix rising from Arizona? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Although let's think about the other way too, is like if this didn't happen, right? None of these companies would survive either, right? Or it would take them just a lot longer. Yeah, it would take a lot longer or there'd be some consolidation. We don't know. I uh, literally yeah. just saw like 10 minutes ago that Shake Shack is now doing build your own Shack burger kits and they're like mailing them out and stuff like that. Yeah. Just to pivot a little bit, there's a lot of places that are doing that. And uh, as I said, we probably do another podcast about how companies are pivoting. One thing that I've been noticing, you're talking about people that have operations that are set up and they're saying, okay, we have X, Y, and Z. We have these types of products to offer. We're still allowed to sell X, Y, and Z, but how do we differentiate and get it into the hands of the consumers and still make money? So the chain, I think it's basically an East Coast chain, but it's Iron Hill Brewery. They've just started meal kits. So they're riding on the coattails of people. It's like, I don't want to cook anymore. I just want somebody to give me my food. They're actually now even doing, you can go on the Iron Hill website and order eggs and milk and staples. And then also maybe a growler of beer, some sandwiches. I mean, they're becoming a full stop. I don't want to go to the grocery store. I'm just going to get these food staples that I need from Iron Hill. It's definitely a great plus for them. And obviously from a marketing standpoint, it's, it makes them look good. But any way that these companies can keep their bottom line and keep people on and just keep going until whenever this ends is, you know, is a positive for them. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Truly. I think that's crazy that Iron Hill's doing that. Yeah. I honestly didn't even it was know. Like, it was like, yeah, you can, you can get, they'll give you a whole steak dinner, but it's all uncooked. But the, yeah. You know, the quality of the food's really good. I think that's really great. I mean, it's a shame <laughs> that they're so far away from me. All right, spend all my money there. But anyway, <laughs> as we're recording this podcast on the 31st, there's actually some strikes occurring. I know Whole Foods was looking to go out on strike. Instacart 
workers were looking to strike. And what they're protesting is they, you know, I think it's the safety, the pay, the hours. I don't know what's going to happen with that. It's, it's a very interesting thing to see because who holds all the cards right now? The service workers. <laughs> I mean, they're literally the, the, the essential staff. They're the essential staff. They're what's basically holding everyone's sanity together right now because if you basically said, sorry, no more takeout, no delivery, no more beer distributors, no more going to a drugstore, I mean, people would just lose their minds. So in that aspect, they hold all the cards. It's, it would be interesting to see how the big companies react to that, how Amazon and at all, you know, react to that kind of uh, action. So wait and see. And I guess by the time this podcast comes out, it may have been resolved. But as of this recording, which is on the 31st, it's occurring right now. So, okay, we will do a little stat time. Instacart's year over year order volume has increased 150% due to growth in the last few weeks with 15% larger orders on average, according to the company. Delivery company Shipped has seen downloads of its app increase by about 124% in recent weeks and announced plans last week to add thousands of new shoppers with a goal of onboarding hundreds in New York City and about 3,000 in the Detroit metro area. There's an unprecedented demand for groceries across America with popularity of non-perishable goods like dried beans rising 230% and canned tuna rising 142% in the last week, according to Diesel data. And it says that 2.25 million could lose their jobs as a result of coronavirus, according to Goldman Sachs economist. And one thing I will note is we've been seeing this panic buying, and I've read several articles about the psychology of panic buying. One thing is if you're in Sam's Club and you're you're standing there in line, you're thinking, do I have enough? You keep looking at other people's carts. It's a psychology thing. It's an add-on. It's like the pan, the wisdom of crowds kind of thing. <laughs> People go, oh, I should get more. Go run back and more. Go, go, go get more beans. I, I see this guy's got beans. He's got rice. People are buying up things that they're never going to use. You know, rice, beans. There's no food shortage in this country. The supply chain is not broken down. There is enough toilet paper. There is enough beans. It's just, it hasn't gotten to the store yet because everyone that goes to the store buys not one can of tuna. They buy 10 cans of tuna. They buy five packs of beans. This week now, the big thing is bread because now everybody's cooking bread. You can't buy yeast and you can't buy flour this week. True. Do we live in the depression? This is not a depression. This is not a depression. Everybody's ma- as of yet. Every- I know. <laughs> everybody's making sourdough. <laughs> oh, everybody's making sourdough. Yeah, that's like you look on Twitter, it's like what's trending? Sourdough. You know, the, the big tweet was like this guy's sourdough starter broke and it, because it's, you know, it kind of oozes, it oozed down the counter. Yeah. It was making its way down the kitchen. He goes, look how far it got. Uh, yeah, I mean, all those most stores now you can only have one. You can buy one of yeah, some of the things. Yeah, they've clamped down. Definitely, like if you go to a CVS or something like that, they're like, you're only getting one paper towel, one toilet paper, one disinfecting wipe. If we even have it, a lot of grocery stores are doing the same thing. And the best thing that I've seen is Costco saying to the people who bought the five twenty-four packs of toilet paper and want to return it, tough crap. You live with your decisions, pal. So. I love that. That's all for Costco. Thank you. All right, that's your e-commerce minute for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy. <laughs>